Hi, I'm Mark Renshaw and this is the story of my bike and today we have a LaPierre Ultimate Scandium Carbon. So, going way back to 2004, uh, I raced this bike, I think it was in the Herald Sun Tour at the end of the season, at the end of uh, my professional season and look, big things are, we've got um, carbon fork, carbon steerer, so yeah, pretty impressive technology. Um, <laughs> We're also going back to an aluminium frame or scanium frame with a carbon rear stay. So who would have thought that we'd um, you know, mix materials there to have a, a carbon rear stay aluminium lugs on the back. Full Turace group set. Not too much carbon to be, to be seen yet, Rob. It's actually kind of fun to do it. It's a real blast. It sort of looks like a a shop bike, doesn't it? Like, as in, uh, it's hard to believe that it was from a pro team. I think this was probably a replacement just when you came back yeah. to Australia. So, um, I think I came back to Australia from a season in Europe and they trashed the frame in the, the post. So this is um, this is one they got out to me quickly for the, the Sun Tour. But uh, exactly the same bike I, I raced the year on. Uh, just we had blue instead of black paint job uh, with uh, Le Francis de Jeu. You know, step, stepping back in time, really. Uh, you know, carbon seat post, which is pretty impressive from Richie. So our STI levers, we still have the cables here, um, which you could kind of use to time trial. Like, Gave you a little bit of extra stability, and all in all, I think these were even the wheels I was racing on. So, we're talking alloy wheels here. Change so, we got the cadence sensor here from Polar. You know, the mechanic in the shop, uh, you know, just pointed out he was very impressed that we've still got the Shimano flight deck uh, on the bike and he was pretty confident if he put a battery in that, that it would work. Um, so, you know, it's, in a couple of years time, this bike will be more than 20 years old and, um, you know, there's been a lot of technology come. We, we've still got the lugs welded here for the, you know, the cable guidance. Uh, so, yeah, trip back to memory lane, Rob. If I can sort of remember the roster, it was the year after McGee wore the yellow jersey in the Tour de France. Uh, Baden Cook had uh, won the green jersey in 2003. I sat at uh, Charles de Gaulle Airport after the Tour de France that year and watched Baden and uh, Bradley Wiggins sign new contracts with FDJ, yep. with Mark Matteo. And, um, he was a real motivator. Uh, Mark Matteo is a, certainly a big, big, colourful personality in pro cycling even still. Uh, he was back then. You must have a story about Mark himself. Yeah, no, a lot, a lot of stories about Mark. Um, you know, he's pretty hands-on as far as team owners go. Uh, he's floating around majority of the races, definitely everything in France he's about. Um, yeah, and a big character, like you mentioned, and very French, uh, you know, going back to 2004. Um, we had a few Australians on the team, but not too many different nationalities as a French team. And, yeah, look, Grateful, I, I got my foot in the door at the pro with Le Francis de Jure, and you know, thanks to Brad um, and the guys you mentioned, Baden Cook, Matt Wilson, uh, we all kind of were there at that period of time, and yeah, some some great stories and uh, very motivating, but um, also quite hard as a as a neo pro turning up to France with zero French. Um, I didn't really listen in school when we were going to learn French because I didn't think I'd ever need it. But as it was, I, I really did, and um, yeah, you know, look, this bike brings back a lot of memories because it, it's where I started in the professional ranks. We're seeing a huge stack there, if we're going to actually talk about the bike instead of the team. You hadn't uh, gotten flexible yet, or what was the story um, then? Look, I'd still, uh, I still pretty much was a track rider, so it's probably the reason why it's a bit higher than all my other bikes. <laughs> um, I dare say I made a pretty quick adjustment after this and, and figured that uh, a little bit lower in aero, um, still quite long, but uh, yeah, back in time, it was, 
definitely a track rider coming over to the professional ranks and I had a good season, um, some good races and you know it just blows my mind that we're talking about aluminium, aluminium frame and then we've got a carbon rear stay, it's, it makes me chuckle but um, you know because I can vividly remember that um, I was probably the coolest person in Bathurst because I had carbon rear stays on frame <laughs> so no one else had really seen that. Every bike that we've referenced so far, you've talked about your love of the, the round handlebars. These have got the old, um, yeah, that's sort of a statement of time, isn't it? Where they were doing yeah. these ergo pens, which you seem to hate. Um, yeah, no, this is the start of it, I think. Um, we didn't really have an option, we had to ride them, so it's, um, yeah, look, it wasn't, wasn't my favourite bike over the period of time, but, um, you know, as a Neo Pro, it was pretty impressive to be you know, given a bike and a contract and, and have a salary come in. In uh, 2004, how old were you? I was, I think I was just turned 21 in that year. So, uh, uh, you know, pretty old as a pro these days. <laughs> but back then it was, um, it was the age that most guys turned pro. And that sort of more or less came off the back of your track results. Did you sort of, um, when you were speeding around doing team pursuits, and even, well, you'd hark back, your first big result was in the kilo. Uh, as a junior, you won a world title, I think. And, yeah. Um, no, 2004 is also the year I rode um, the Olympics in Athens. We had uh, I rode the points race there, so I kind of a little bit of the season was committed to preparing for the um, Athens Olympics, which you know not many teams would let riders do. But Mark Matteo was happy for me to focus on that, as um, you know the year before in, in 03 I was an amateur in, in Dijon. Uh, and racing World Cups here and there, so they kind of knew I had objectives. But you know, as soon as those 2004 Olympics passed, it was um, wholly and solely uh, road racing. Then we're talking about it. 2004 was a halcyon time for Australian cycling. Right? Six gold medals at the Olympics um, on the on the road with Sarah Carrigan, and then uh, two for Graham Brown, one team pursuit, one in the Madison, then team pursuit. And uh, Brad McGee you know, coming second to Brad Wiggins in the individual pursuit. And uh, I mean, it was an amazing time. Mm. What's your memory of Athens like? It must have been a, a yeah. blast. Was it frightening? Oh. Was it daunting? Was it no. celebratory? What was the vibe? At that stage, I was still pretty young, uh, still developing. And uh, yeah, big ambition. So I, I rode the points race in Athens. Didn't get the result I wanted. Kind of... Um, it was in a period of time where they were changing the rules in points racing. It was going from points to laps and, and vice versa. You know, I ended up being two laps down on the winner, taking two laps myself, but yeah, just at that stage, probably focused too much on sprinting rather than taking laps. And yeah, as it was, I was a young rider, but we had a, you know, super successful team with the, you know, all the results you just mentioned. Um, but I was happy to you know, focus on the road after that. I was a bit obviously disappointed to not win a gold because I think I was probably one of the only guys in all the Australian team not to, you know, win a gold or a silver medal. Um, but I come home and, you know, that motivated me for the, the road season. You were actually initially meant to do Madison and mm. then more or less a couple of days before they put Stuart O'Grady in to partner Graham Brown. Is that how I remember? No, I, um, in 2003 I pretty much qualified the, the spot for the Madison in the Olympics. Um, was always going to do it until probably a week or ten days before the Olympics and they, they hauled me into a meeting and said you're out and Stewie's in. Um, as it was he was you know, on fire that year and uh, between him and Graham they, you know, they, they won with a, you know, a few points up their sleeve and rode a, an amazing race. You know I couldn't do much, they, you can't do much complaining when they win the race so I, uh, yeah I just I left Athens a little bit disappointed with, I think I was sixth in the points race, so around the mark, but, but not on the podium. That's where it kind of all started, it was back then in 2004. And yeah, so it does, it, it's nice to think back to that period of time, but all I can do is smile at this bike because, um, you know, to think that I was riding around on this as a, as a Neo Pro, um, thinking my shit didn't stink because I had carbon rear stays. <laughs>
um, yeah, probably no. 2002, if I remember correctly. Well, it even goes back further than that. Um, so, yeah, through Brad and Rodney McGee, they got me a start in Dijon as an amateur in 2003. Um, and Dijon is the, the town where Lapierre was, you know, first formed or, or first started. So, I kind of, I know Gilles Lapierre really well as I was an amateur there in Dijon. So, I kicked around the factory and um, I knew him quite well and, you know, it's, it's grown and grown. It's probably one of the biggest brands in France and most well known. Just for anyone who's wondering, all the bonding is still intact. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it was written not too long ago, actually. Uh, so everything felt pretty good. I, yeah, I don't think this thing's going to get too sloppy over time. I think it'll stand its ground. And just quickly, if we're talking about, it's, I mean, we've been looking at Ultimate Scanium. It's been spelled out in huge letters. Mm -hmm. um, if, do you have a recall of the feel of Scandium versus what you sort of basically? became um, a carbon fibre crew? I think, uh, you know, look, remembering back, it, um, it gave a pretty subtle ride. Uh, you know, the carbon was pretty forgiving in the rear end. So, um, all in all, the ride was, it's not the stiffest bike, um, but the ride was pretty good. Just looking at the forks, you know, the rake, um, you wouldn't dare see a, a rake like that on a, on a road bike now in the professional peloton. Uh, and I think that gave it a really nice ride, so. It was probably pretty comfortable and, and not very fast. <laughs> well, there's a whole collection of bikes hanging in your shop at, at, at Renshaw's Pedal Project, and people should come and have a look. We're going to conclude this series with a, a real walk down memory lane. We're going to go to a track bike. Thanks for talking about your Neo Pro bike. That's super cool. Thanks.